What's going on, gardeners? It's Sunday, April 30th, and the blueberries are already starting to ripen here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. That's why on today's video, I'm going to share a tip with you that will allow you to double the length of your blueberry harvest season so you can be growing blueberries longer than you ever thought. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. But before I share this secret with you, if you're new to growing blueberries, I'm going to link both above and down into the video description a complete guide on growing blueberries that I put together that will teach you everything there is to know about growing blueberries. It's probably the most complete blueberry growing guide on the entire entire internet. There are five main classifications of blueberries, northern high bush, southern high bush, rabbit eye, half high, and low bush. This video is going to focus on the top three, which are the northern high bush, southern high bush, and rabbit eye classifications, which are the most common and they make extending your growing season possible. Northern high bush and southern high bush classifications are basically the same. They're just given different designations based on the hardiness of the cultivars and how many chill hours they require. For example, northern high bush varieties are generally hardy between zones four through seven and require 600 to 1,000 chill hours, while a southern high bush variety is usually hardy to zones six through 10 and require anywhere from 200 to 600 chill hours. So for those reasons, you plant the northern high bush varieties in colder areas because the additional chill hours keep them dormant for a long period of time so they won't bud break too early and the flowers won't be killed by late frosts and freezes. Similarly, you would plant the southern high bush varieties in warmer climates where there are less chill hours and the overall lack of chill would not allow a northern high bush cultivar to flower and fruit. So because the only real difference between northern and southern high bush cultivars is the amount of chill hours and the hardiness zone requirements, they generally fruit along the same pattern. The bushes are about the same stature. They're pruned similarly. And whatever your last chance of frost date is, once those flowers start opening up and forming fruits, you're going to have similar times to maturity across most of the cultivars for the most part. So for the most part, your high bush varieties are some of the more early maturing blueberries berries out there. Rabbit eye varieties, on the other hand, behave completely differently. Most rabbit eye varieties are hardy through zones six through nine, and they have chill hour requirements that could vary. They have different stature than your northern and southern high bush varieties. The plants grow larger and they live a lot longer. Rabbit eye cultivars can live decades. So if you want blueberry bushes that produce for a very long period of time, rabbit eye cultivars are a really good idea. Now what makes rabbit eye varieties really cool is they flower are actually before the high bush varieties, but they don't ripen until about an entire month later. So for here where I live in North Carolina, my rabbit eye blueberries start flowering in late January, if you can believe it. But those flowers, for whatever reason, are super cold hardy. We get nights down into the teens here every single year, and nights in the teens don't even bother my rabbit eye cultivars. And then they go along, they produce their fruit, they set the fruit, and they ripen it well beyond your northern and southern high bush varieties so I get them very late into the season and that is the key to making this all work. The thing about blueberries is the overwhelming majority of varieties are not self-fertile. You need at least two plants to cross-pollinate in order to set fruit. And to make things more complicated, high bush and rabbit eye varieties are not compatible. The pollen can't cross-pollinate each other. So if you want to grow high bush varieties, you have to grow at least two different varieties of high bush that flower at the same time so they can cross-pollinate. And if you want rabbit eye varieties, you have to grow at least two different rabbit eye varieties that flower at the same time so they can cross-pollinate. So because rabbit eye varieties and high bush varieties do not cross-pollinate, what most people do is they only grow one classification of blueberry. They will either grow high bush or they will either grow rabbit eye. And then they'll just get two or three varieties that are compatible with each other and that's all they will grow. This is a great strategy if you want a whole lot of blueberries all at once because if you're only growing one classification of blueberry, generally speaking, they're all going to ripen their fruit at about the same amount of time. So it's good to give you big buckets of blueberries all at once, but if you want to extend your growing season, you're only going to get those big buckets of blueberries all at once. And then once you pick the bushes clean, 
That's the end of blueberry season until next year. The way I get around this problem is I grow two different classifications of blueberries. I grow southern highbush varieties and rabbit eye varieties here in southeastern North Carolina. Doing this, I'm able to dramatically extend my blueberry season. I get to harvest blueberries for an entire additional month. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The three blueberry bushes that you're looking at right now are my southern highbush varieties. They are O'Neill and Star. Star is the big bush in the middle and it is very impressive. And I want to show you that they are already ripening their crop. Here is my O'Neill blueberry right here. This one still has a lot of green blueberries, but it's a bit smaller. My star blueberry, on the other hand, is absolutely loaded with fruit. They are in the process of ripening. I've already picked several of the blueberries off of them. And because they're in the process of ripening, I actually have to start covering these with bird netting because they're already starting to get attacked by birds. There's bird damage all over this poor bush. Then over here, I have my other O'Neill blueberry, and this one is starting to ripen as well. So here we are in late April, and we already have blueberries here on all of our southern high bush varieties which is very impressive now i want to show you my rabbit eye varieties here i have three rabbit eye blueberries titan crewer and pink lemonade pink lemonade actually is a self-fertile variety it's one of the rare ones that don't require cross-pollination but they recommend that you interplant it with rabbit eye blueberry types and right here is my titan blueberry this blueberry isn't anywhere near having anything ripe the, uh, the berries are still completely green on the bush. It's going to be quite a while before anything on this bush begins to ripen. Then next to it, we have my pink lemonade blueberry. It seems to have taken some winter damage, so I'm going to have to cut this, uh, this tree back right here, but that's not a big deal. It will recover. This is a really delicious blueberry, and you can see uh, the blueberries on it are completely green. They practically look like green olives yet. And then next to it, we have crewer, these blueberries also are nowhere near being ready. So it's going to take at least a month, probably longer, before any of these blueberries on my rabbit eye cultivars begin to ripen. So here we are on April 30th, and I am already able to harvest ripe blueberries off of my star southern high bush blueberry plant. And keep in mind, all of these blueberry plants that you've seen so far in this video are only about two years old. Mm. They're so much better than what you get at a grocery store when you eat them fresh off the bush like this. And I can't blame any of the birds for wanting to come here and attack the blueberries and eat them because they are absolutely fantastic. But that being said, we worked way too hard to get this blueberry harvest, and I just don't feel like sharing any more of my blueberries with the birds. And one of the best tools that you can use to protect your fruit from both birds and insects alike is insect netting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover all of my southern high bush varieties with the insect netting until I can harvest them completely. Then once the southern high bush varieties get harvested completely, we will be able to move the same insect netting right over to the rabbit eye varieties because they should be ripening at that point. So it's very clear to me that the southern highbush varieties where I live ripen their fruit in April and May. Because my rabbit eye cultivars are about a month behind, maybe a little bit more, that is going to extend my blueberry harvest all the way into June, maybe even early July. So I'm basically doubling my blueberry harvest season because I'm growing two different types of blueberries. Now the downside to this method is I am getting less of a blueberry harvest at this exact instance in time. Obviously, if I were to have grown all southern highbush varieties, at this exact moment, I would be getting twice as many blueberries as I am right now. So if you mix and match different classifications of blueberries like I am, at any given point in time, you'll basically get half the amount of harvest. However, I have a solution for this as well. Blueberries are hardy, disease-resistant, shallow-rooted plants, and as such, they are perfect for foundation planting around your home. All of the blueberry bushes that I showed you in this video are planted alongside my foundation, about two feet off the face of the foundation. Most of us have decorative shrubs planted around our house anyway that probably aren't serving much purpose at all, except for erosion control and a good look. Consider ripping them out and replacing them with blueberries, because blueberry bushes make beautiful shrubs and you can eat off of them. 
So if you think that you don't have enough room in your garden or your yard to plant an additional classification of blueberries, consider planting them along the foundation of your house. Plant a different classification from what you're already growing, and you can double your blueberry harvest season. And that right there is how you can double the length of your blueberry harvest season. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you need to know exactly how to grow blueberries, I will link a complete guide to doing so down in the video description. And while you're there, check out my Amazon storefront to see everything I use in real life in my garden. And also check out my spread shop link for custom merch if you want to support the channel. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale is not a very heavy shedder, but this time of year in the spring, he does start to lose his coat. And this Furminator is like the greatest tool on earth. And Dale loves it. I have this linked in my Amazon storefront under Dale's favorite things, but you have to see how great this works. It just takes off that undercoat. It gets all of that fur out of there. And then you just press this button right here and it will release that fur. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but this is the greatest tool. Dale, come! And Dale really likes it. It feels really good. You can see all of that stuff flying off of him. Get all the way to his tail, and every time you go through, you get all that hair. Press that button, and it will release all that hair right there. There's lots of dried skin on it. If you do that, once or twice a day during this time of the year, it's going to get rid of all their shedding, and boy, do they enjoy it.